Yeah, hi everybody, it's uh, Rob Berich here from heatengineer.com. Um, there's been a lot of talk lately with Part L building regulations and low temperature heating systems, etc., etc., um, and a way to kind of start getting a decent understanding of what you actually need in heat loss for a property before you go and do room by room calculations, etc., is to um, possibly take advantage of our free estimator tool. Um, this works in two ways. It works um, as an app um, on your phones um, or tablets, or it also works as a standalone version on your desktop. Now, the difference between the two, um, fairly simple. The On your um, Android or iOS device that you have, uh, all of this information is stored on your phones or your tablets free of charge but printing them off is more of an issue. If you want to print them off and save it, you would have to sign up to Heat Engineer. It's free of charge to sign up. You don't need to pay any money at all. And then you could be able to download those, put them to your desktop, and then you can send those surveys to your clients. As I say, that is free. Um, if you then want to do a room by room heat loss calculation after that, then of course, you know we would expect you to subscribe um, for our either sole trader or SME type accounts that we have. But what I want to do is just run through a quick demo of using this very, very quick tool to get an overview of what the total heat loss of the building is. Very, very quick, can be done in under 10 minutes uh, on, a, on a standard property. Um, and all we're doing is measuring the outside of the building and percentages of windows, etc. So what I'll do is on the right hand side of your screen, um, you'll see the app um, up there. Now, right at the bottom, uh, we actually I, I just have to just say this, put this caveat in. At the moment, this is I'm working on an iOS device, so this is a, this is an iPhone that you can see on the screen on the right hand side. On on Android device at the moment, you don't have the heat loss estimator, but that is coming literally within a few weeks time from this video. And what I'll do is I'll do an update um, as that comes out. So you can see you've got the three options down the bottom here: sound assessment, which is also free. Uh, your estimator tool and your heat loss surveys on the uh, right hand side there. So if I click on the estimator tool, this is the first page that comes up. There's a little tutorial video at the top that you can you can look at. Now we've got this, so this estimator will do any type of building. So whether it's domestic or a commercial, it makes no difference. It could be a you know 2,000 bedroom hotel, it could be whatever it is that you that you want to do. This is what you're trying to get a very very quick calculation for. Uh, to see what's going on. And I, and I reiterate again, this is free just to try and get everybody at least getting this calculation done before we you know, start the whole process of room by room and decent system design. So we'll just click on a domestic one for the moment and we press continue. Now we'll just put a little project reference in here and I'm just going to do this. I'll just call this home. All right, I'm, I'm just, just, just going to put it in as me for argument's sake. You put in whoever you want. I can just type in whatever site address. I've just, I've just tapped anything in there. The most important thing in here is to type in your postcode of where you, you know, of where you are. Um, I'll just type in a postcode that I know um, will um, is, is accurate and will work with um, with this um, uh, presentation. Uh, so that's in. Uh, UK region, I'll just put down here, this is where we're, we're at, is the Thames Valley and the reference city, the nearest one to us is London. Click done and we're there. Engineer, well it's me, so that'll do. Today's date 19th of the 5th 2023. Has the property had an extension? Well we're going to say no at the moment but again it's pretty self-explanatory to if this um, does come up because it will do is it will add that area to your initial building that you've done. So very intuitive. Next step, we now need to put in some values. You can see we've got a few values here that we can do. So there's two things I'm gonna do with this um, um, presentation now. I want to try and let people understand that when you go and do an initial calculation on a property that has possibly not had upgraded windows or upgraded insulation in the roof space, any government grant works or anything like that, you can give your client the um, correct and accurate result before they've had any works done and then I'll show you a feature that we've built into it um, later on in this presentation where you can actually then compare with anything that they do upgrade with and that's the kind of sort of pretty good selling point really I think with this so if we just look at the u-value of our roof and ceiling glazing so this is things like Velux windows that kind of thing there um, let's just put in some really basic stuff that we've got in a you know within within a property. Let's put some single glazing, you know, wood glazing up there. A U value of four point eight. 
and it's called that. Of course, you can add any material you want at the bottom right hand side of that screen. There it says add material, and you can just put in any U value or any type of material that you would like on there. So it's very, very bespoke this. Click done. That's now saved into the into the um, um, software. Now we're looking at the roof and the ceiling. So we'll tip on that, uh, tap on that, and we've now, let's just say we've got a uh, pitched roof with no insulation. We click done. We've then got what is above the roof. Well, we've got air above the roof at this stage. Uh, it's not in a, in a block of flats or anything like that. Um, U value of the windows, again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick some single glazing, again, 4.8, quite an old building. Um, we're going to now click on some external walls. This is a 1900 built property. So it's got something like solid brick there, 228 millimeters with plaster. So it's a U value of 2.11. We'll just click that one and we'll call that done. Um, we'll then just click on internal external doors and we've got solid solid wood doors here. So this is this has got a high heat loss, this building, as you can see as, it, as, it, as it's building up. Uh, your floor type in here, we're looking at a solid, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, solid floor. Um, and glazing to wall ratio. Now this is, um, some people don't understand this, but what I would actually do is look at, the, look at an elevation of a building. So just imagine you're stood in the back garden of a property. Look at the building, look at the total square meterage of the entire face of that building. Look at the windows and say, is that 10% of that window? Is it, sorry, 10% of that elevation, 20% of that elevation? The standard within UK homes is about 20%, and that's why it's pre-populated. But you can choose whatever you would like. I know, for argument's sake, this, this building that we're working on at the moment is 15%. So I'm going to just change that to 15, and that gets us just a little bit closer to the truth. Number of roof glazing, well, there's two Velux in this, uh, in this property, so... We'll say right those. Number of external doors, there's two. Front door and back door. An average indoor temperature, we're looking at, well, I think most people should know this, is since the building regulations of 2000, the year 2000 came out, we are now designing everything at 21 degrees. But of course, you can bespoke this in a room by room calculation to whatever you want to do when you multi-zone. Obviously you need to make sure doors are shut if you're gonna have 18 degrees in a bedroom and 21 degrees and elsewhere because second law of thermodynamics clearly states that hot will go to cold. So what we need to do is just make sure that is the case. So we generally design everything to 21 degrees these days. Uh, number of floors on this we have two. Average story height, 2.4 meter high ceiling is pretty average. Tap to select, let's call this one a terrace, it could be a detached, whatever it is that you'd like to do. Um, average floor area on the bottom there, uh, let's just try and keep the maths really simple, let's just call it 50 square meters, so, so it's a 100 square meter property when you've got to take the ground floor and the first floor into consideration. There you go, there, total uh, dwelling volume as well, which we've got in cubic meters. We then click on next. Oh, sorry, it's saying that I need to specify a ground floor material. So that's that's good. This is good that, it, that, it's, uh, that it's prompting us. Uh, there it is there, look, ground floor material, which I didn't do. So we said ground floor, no insulation. And there we're done. Click next. Height above sea level. Now, you've got two options here. You can go on to a website uh, that we've got, which is on our desktop version, which is mapcoordinates.com. Um, and you can just type in your postcode and that will give you your elevation above sea level. This helps to give you your outside design temperature. I know that ours is, is, um, is just, it's about 47, 48 meters above sea level. So we're gonna just put in up to 50, which you can just see there. We click OK. Very important to change that. Or to make to make sure that is correct. Exposed location. If you are living on the top of a hill and there's no other houses around you, that's fairly exposed. If you're living in the middle of a um, uh, an estate, a housing estate, and there's no um, you know open sides to to anywhere around you apart from your back garden and stuff like that, you're probably in a reasonable reasonably unexposed location. What exposed location adds to the calculation is ten percent. So. What I would say is that you've got to make an engineering decision on that on that uh, scenario. Ours is not in a uh, um, our, our example is not in a an exposed location, so we're going to say no. Average number of air changes per hour. Now you can see just by that there's a little eye, obviously for information. You click on that, it just pops up this little uh, drop box. Now this is this is literally just to give you an idea of what these air change rates are likely to be from SIBSI building regulations. 
Now, we're looking at a an older building, leaky roofs, leaky floors, leaky windows, all sorts of things like that. So we're looking at a, a poor air tightness, probably between one and five, one point five and two in a lot of cases. So we go to poor, uh, poor to poor, which is which is okay. Uh, so we click on that and we will say one point five. Say done. As I say, this is getting us just nearer to the truth. We've actually uh, got some pretty good evidence now that this estimator tool is within five percent of a room by room calculation. Uh, the only thing that it doesn't do, obviously, is the room by room for sizing radiators, pipe work, etc., at very low temperatures uh, for your maximum efficiency gains. So we now have all of this on the top. Uh, we are looking now for domestic hot water. Domestic hot water is purely for energy usage. Number of bedrooms, let's just put in here two occupants per bedroom. Let's just say there's one, two people living in a house. Um, if it was if it was um, four people living in the house, you'd put in two per bedroom. If it was only one person living in the house, you'd put 0 0.5. It's simple as that. It's very simple mathematics. Number of bathrooms, only one. Okay, we're all done. We now click Finish, and we now have our heat loss. So this incredibly leaky building, um, two up, two down, terrace property, is needing 11.18 .18 kilowatts of heat at minus two degrees outside. Now what that means is that obviously at minus two degrees outside it's needing 11.18 kilowatts. If that temperature goes up to say 10 degrees or 12 degrees or 15.5 or degrees, which is the cutoff point that Sibsi state that the house needs needs uh, internal heating, it's going to need massively less amount of kilowatts in order to put into that property. So you, your design outside temperature is taking your 11.18 at its worst case scenario. So this gives you that total heat loss very, very quickly. And as I say, you, you don't even have to get tape measures out on a lot of this stuff. You can actually literally, you know, pace out what a meter is. Most people can walk, you know, roughly a meter in, in length. And you pace out the outside of the building times the length by the width gives you the square meters of the, of the, of the building. And, and away you go. You look at the ceiling heights. So you can do this in very, very quick time. And the more you do it, you know, the quicker it becomes. So that's our um, heat loss calculation from that. Now what I want to do, we close that. I want to try and say to the client, well, what if we did this? Let's just say we put some insulation in your loft and we changed some windows. Let's just say there was a government grant coming out, which is likely to be happening of you know, updating windows or updating insulation, getting your building fabric first ready, if you like, for lower temperature systems, which is what we all really want to do. Um, try and get some better efficiencies within our properties. So we click on history. We click on heat loss surveys. And you can see that that one at the top there, the home estimated, which has just been done, um, partially obscured there, I don't know why. We click edit. If we just copy that, which we've just done, click on that top one, which is what we've got there, and click on the copy. We want to continue. So we've got all of this de detail that we had there. We want to go to the next step. And we want to look at some of these U values. And let's just see what we're going to do. So we're going to change uh, this glazing that we had. We had single glazing wood PVC frame. We're going to up this to a, um, a better quality bit of kit. Let's, um, let's put in the new building regulations. The new building regulations at the moment, current building regulations, are 1.6. But there's a few you can do if you want to go for lower as 1.4 on the market. Uh, that's a custom um, uh, U value that I've that I've built. But you can do that. You can build as many custom U values as you as you would like. So let's just stick with the 1.6 U value of this window replacement for the loft space. Our roof had no insulation in it. So let's let's be bold and let's put in 300 millimeters of mineral wool insulation into our loft space. So very sorry, very very likely to happen. Click done. We know this roof above is air. The glazing, we're going to change that glazing. We're going to change that to current building regulations of 1.6. We're also we, there's not a lot we can do about the external walls unless we start installing PIR or Celotex type insulation and backing plasterboard either right the way through the inside of the whole building, which is a huge retrofit project. Or there's some that I've seen where they're they're um, installing 
uh, at PIR um, cellar text types on the outside of buildings and rendering it up. I would be very, very careful about making these decisions without taking professional guidance on indoor air quality management. A lot of these buildings were built to breathe, um, and so it's very important that the moisture content within the building is carefully managed, whether it's through MVHR or the building design through uh, through passive ventilation, that kind of thing. But please do seek um, some professional advice on this. So we're, at this stage, we're not going to do anything with these uh, solid outside walls. We're going to leave those as 228 millimeters. Um, external doors, yep, we're going to change these external doors and we're going to get a slightly better door. Let's just put these down to a high quality door with 50% glazing for argument's sake, 2.2. But again, you can put in whatever you value you like and build whatever it is you like. So on the bottom right hand side, you can see add material. So you can just do that as said. Uh, click done. Uh, floor type, solid. We're going to keep it as solid. What we are going to do, carpets up. And we're going to put 25 millimeters of insulation down and then board it over the top and lay your carpets back down. Now, it might mean cutting down a few doors in the property, changing sk skirting boards, etc., etc. But if we're talking about, you know, really trying to save energy and save, save um, um, heat loss, that might be an argument um, to have. And again, who knows what's coming in the future. So let's just pick the 25 millimeters for now and just see what it does. We still, glaze is not going to change. The number of uh, roof glaze is not going to change. In fact, nothing's really going to change there from that from that point and down. Um, so we now click next. None of that is going to change. So your dwelling is 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 not an exposed location. Uh, the air changes are not going to change unless you uh, opt for getting what is called a blower door test on your property, which again I highly recommend. You know, two or three hundred quid, something like that, uh, to get one done these days. Um, that will tell you exactly what your air changes per hour are. They tested at 50 pascals uh, with a big blower door unit which sits right in your front door. It's a sealed frame with a, with a big fan in the center. It's all computerized and it, and it, uh, it does um, uh, extraction um, measurements and extraction measurements. So uh, e extraction measurements and internal measurements. So, so it's blowing in and sucking out at the end of the day and gives you these exact measurements uh, for, what, for what you need. We're looking at, again, as I say, we're minus 2.1 degrees outside. Nothing's changed down here. We now click Finish. And let's have a look at that. We've pretty much almost halved our heat loss on this, which now, just by changing windows, just by putting insulation in the uh, roof space, putting 25 millimeter on the floor, I mean, we could easily go back and take that 25 millimeter out so you don't have to do that work inside. You're still gonna come in around seven and a half, maybe eight kilowatts, something like that. So you're, the, the savings here by doing these things are vast. It makes a project like this completely heat pump ready or low temp ready, prob probably and very likely with the existing pipe work that you have uh, because your heat load is, is much, much less. But if I close that now, and this is something you can now do for your clients, we can click on the top right hand side of this, we can click compare. And this is all on the app, which makes it makes it so much easier so you can do in you know 15 minutes or 20 minutes with your with your client when you're around doing a quotation. Click both of those two, because that was the original one and the and the copy that we made. Click to compare, and this is what you can show to your client immediately. So the blue is what was our original heat loss calculation after 10 minutes of, of measuring up. And the green is what we've done just by changing the windows and um, insulation, putting insulation in the loft space. This is a fantastic tool. I can pretty much guarantee that this will absolutely win you the work, win you the job. We don't make the maths up there. It's a little, little um, statement that we've had for a long, long time. Less is obviously more. Uh, we are in what I would absolutely call a wastage crisis. And just by sorting these few little bits and pieces out, possibly through future government grants or all sorts of things like that, this is what you can reduce your energy consumption by. I hope you hope, like this video. I hope it's really helped you and made uh, the estimated tool very clear and something that you can use for free. And we would obviously hope that you would subscribe uh, and uh, like some of our videos, etc., etc., to uh, um, move our energy transition and our, our, our uh, move towards better efficiency systems um, in the future. Many thanks for your time. Cheers. Bye-bye.